and we are back. Welcome to the quarter-final predictions after what has been the longest two days of my life. Honestly, I cannot believe it. it's only been two days since the final round of last 16 game. It feels like an absolute lifetime ago. But I have to say, on those final last 16 games, fair play to Turkey for producing a performance that I don't think many expected could happen, especially after that 6-1 drumming they suffered from Austria in their previous match. But fair play to Turkey. They dug in. They got the result that they needed thanks to that incredible save in the last minute of the match. So they're going to be playing the Netherlands tomorrow. But we're not here to talk about tomorrow. We are here to talk about today because it is the day that we have all been waiting for. Two humongous matches between four of arguably the four current favourites for the Euros. I think everyone's expectation right now is one of these four sides is going to go on and win the whole tournament. So we'll see who I think is going to be winning today. Before we get into it, as always, if you haven't done so already, please do consider dropping a like on this video and subscribing to the channel if you're new around here because we will, of course, have Copper America quarterfinal predictions coming for you later on this evening as well after an incredible night's action over in America as well that we'll have to discuss when we get to that video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And without any further ado, let's get into it. The first day of the quarterfinals in the Euros starts right now. And we'll go for the early kickoff first, as we always do. It is Spain against the hosts, Germany. Arguably the best two performing sides so far in this tournament, going head to head in the quarterfinal today. And honestly, I still don't have full faith in Spain. I really don't. I have said from day one, I don't think Spain are good enough to win this competition. I think their time will come in the World Cup in two years' time. I still think that this is a tournament too early for them. They have played some fantastic stuff. Fabian Ruiz has arguably been the player of the tournament so far. However... In my opinion, they have not faced serious competition. I know people are going to go, well, what about Italy? What about Croatia? Well, Italy were an absolute bismal against Switzerland and got beaten easily. Croatia got knocked out by Italy due to a 97th minute equaliser after playing poorly against Spain and against Albania. So when you consider the fact that those has been Spain's oppositions, a poor Italy, a poor Croatia... An Albania side that got rolled over by the B team and then a Georgia side that realistically only got to the last 16 by beating Portugal's B team. I really don't think Spain have been adequately tested yet. Whereas Germany have played some genuine tough games and have come through them by playing some pretty decent stuff, I think. I think Germany have played very, very well. Obviously, they came through everything possible against the Danish VAR decisions, the weather just absolutely everything. And they came through it pretty damn well, in my opinion. And I think the Germans are playing some very good stuff at the moment. And I think their young stars could end up outshining Spain's young stars tonight. I am going for a 2-1 win to Germany. I think that little extra edge they will have of being the home nation for this game, for this tournament, is just going to see them over the line against the Spanish tonight. I'm also going to say that that is in 90 minutes. You know if you watch these series, when I do draws, when I do extra time and penalty predictions, I always give the draw and then explain extra time and penalties afterwards. I think Germany win in 90 minutes and I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Germans. I think they're just going to have enough. I think they've got the experience in the likes of Tony Cruz to and Ilkay Gundogan to do what they need to do and win that midfield battle that's going to be so crucial. And ultimately, I think they're going to have that little bit of extra quality that's going to see them over the line. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I know a lot of people are favouring Spain tonight. For me, it's Germany's game to lose. As for the other game, the 8 o'clock game, Ronaldo against Mbappe, because all the other world-class players seemingly don't matter when it comes to these two sides. It is the Ronaldo versus Mbappe game. It is Portugal against France. And again, two sides this time that haven't really performed at all. Portugal had a good group stage, but as I spoke about before, were really gifted their opportunities against Turkey. Obviously lost with the B team against Georgia. France, on the other hand, so far in this tournament have played four matches and their three goals have been two own goals and a penalty. They have been very, very poor. What I would say is that defensively, when these sides have put out their first teams, defensively, I think they've been pretty decent. And especially the French in it, when it comes to that regard. 
My only concern for tonight is the matchup of Mbappe against Cancelo. I think that is going to be the turning point of this football match. If Mbappe can consistently get a Cancelo and isolate Ruben Diaz, Portugal are going to be in real big trouble. On the flip side, if Mbappe doesn't track back with Cancelo and leaves Teo Hernandez 2v1 against Bernardo Silva, Cancelo, or potentially Bruno Fernandes drifting over there as well, Portugal could win the game down that side as well. So I think it's a fascinating encounter down that Portuguese right, French left-hand side of the pitch. I think that's where the game is going to be won and lost. But if I look at the way that these teams have played so far in this tournament, the only result I can see is a nil-nil draw. And that might sound like an outlandish prediction given the calibre of players on show for both sides, but that's just the way this tournament has gone. When the big teams have come up against each other, they really have cancelled each other out. You've got to look at the French-Netherlands game as a prime example of that. I don't see many differences between that game and this game. Portugal couldn't score against Slovenia. France have a much better defence than Slovenia. That said... Portugal have a very good defensive pairing in Ruben Diaz and Pepe as well. And I think the French are really going to struggle to actually get the ball into the back of the net once they get into that middle area of the pitch. I think if there's going to be a goal, like I said, it's going to come from Mbappe getting behind Cancelo and getting an early shot off or maybe winning himself a penalty or a free kick that's scored. I don't see where the French get their goal down the middle of the pitch in this match, but... We'll see. Again, the midfield battle is going to be massive as well. Rabiot suspended for the French, so it looks like Camavinga will come in. So it'll be Camavinga, Chouameni and Kante against Palinha, Vitinha and Bruno Fernandes. What a matchup in midfield that is. High calibre players all across the pitch. It's going to be a very, very interesting encounter. But ultimately, like I say, I can't split them. I think it's going to be a nil-nil draw. Potentially all the way to penalties again. If I'm going to pick a side to win this, right now, I would say it's advantage to France. But it's so, so tough to call. We'll see what's going to happen on the night. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Who is it that are going to be facing off in that semi-final? Spain or Germany? Portugal or France? Will the winners of this side of the draw be the eventual winners of the Euros? Let me know. It's going to be a massive day's action. Don't forget to do your fantasy football. I'll be doing a short on that at lunchtime today as well. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I'll be back tomorrow morning for the other two quarterfinals, which will, of course, include England. I'll see you there.